on WRKO. You're on the Savage Nation. Franklin Roosevelt saved England and basically Europe, not Churchill. Okay. So what is it you're arguing about FDR? What part, what part of this argument am I missing? Well, you're missing the fact that uh, you tout uh, Churchill as the great leader that in certain instances was, but he could stand there and make the speech that we will fight on the beaches and so on and so forth. But if, if FDR... Not. Right, well, let, let's take one person at a time. Uh, Churchill was the spiritual or intellectual leader of the English people. He tried to warn them through the 1930s. They wouldn't listen to him. During the war, they did listen to him, and he gave them the courage to fight. Admittedly, it was the Lend-Lease deal and the American troops who saved England. But you, are you arguing, therefore, that because FDR was a liberal, that we need, that only a liberal can save America? Excuse me, FDR was a progressive Democrat, and if you are a... All right, wait, wait, so wait, he was a progressive Democrat. So are you arguing that the internment of the Japanese by this progressive Democrat was a liberal uh, policy that you would support? I'm not discussing Japan, I'm discussing the fact that... Wait, wait, sir, you just said that FDR was a progressive Democrat and that he saved the West during World War II. So I'm asking you... Which of the progressive of this the progressive Democrats policies is it that you are offering us as an example today? Is it the internment of the Japanese? No, nope, I'm talking about the fact of the Second World War and beginning before the Second World War. Oh, sir, wait a minute. You cannot separate and take away individual acts of FDR and say that those were exceptions. He did. He did didn't he pass an executive order to intern the Japanese? Absolutely. But if you All right, so wait. No, wait. Does that make him a progressive Democrat? Or does that t tell us that in times of war, uh, the progressive politics that you seem to be a fan of may have to be put on hold? Again, I'm not going to discuss that. If you want to end the call, fine. I want to talk about... Well, what, do you mean, what do you mean you won't discuss it? Is that because you can't or you won't? No, I won't. How's that? Well, why not? Tell me why you will not discuss the internment of the Japanese since you're, t you're glorifying FDR. And you're saying it's his liberalism that saved the West. But I'm asking you if his acts during World War II, of which there were many, including the internment of the Japanese, were liberal acts or were they actually conservative acts? They were acts at the time uh, that probably were warranted, but hindsight, Monday morning quarterback, showed that they would not have been done if people were not concerned with a so-called eminent attack by the Japanese on our uh, west coast. Okay? I was Wait a minute, wait, wait, no, wait a minute. I miss I'm missing the point. So let's look at some of the, you don't want to talk about the internment of the Japanese by this progressive democrat. So let's talk about some of the other acts of uh, FDR during World War II that certainly don't exhibit any kind of progress, uh, progressive uh, they're not of a pro progressive liberal nature. They were very clearly conservative in nature. Many of his acts were conservative in nature. So during the war, he was able to put aside his socialism and his tendencies toward uh, liberalism and move to save America. So I don't see where you and I have to argue over this. Yeah, we do have to argue over it because of the fact that the way you tout Churchill it, with regard to basically saving England is a lot of horse feathers because uh, it took... So again, so you're arguing now that Churchill's work in the 1930s was of to no avail he single-handedly built up the british armaments industry what are you talking about look if it wasn't he, no no you look he was fought by men like you who were appeasers who said germany does not threaten us we don't need to build up our navy we don't need to build up our air force it was because of churchill that they built the spitfire plane during the 1930s it was, it was because of churchill that they built up the, the royal navy that they had a military so how can you argue he had no effect upon the war and in our country, we had so-called conservative Republicans that said, this fight is not ours. Europe's war is not ours. You, were, you don't remember that, but if you read history, you would have seen that. Well, don't, don't lecture me about history because you read one book. Your points do not make sense. What you're trying to argue is that we need a progressive leader to save us uh, in this battle against Islamofascism. But I'm willing to bet that you won't even identify Islamofascism as the threat, will you? But what happened, to, what happened to you? You went deaf, dumb, and blind all of a sudden? Where do you stand on the threat from Osama bin Laden and the Islamofascists? Do you say it doesn't exist, it does exist, or what? what? No, I don't want to even get into that. I'm not oh, well, what do you want to get into? Why are you wasting my time? Go back to one of your communist halls down there in Boston and give yourself the malarkey and then have a, a scotch on me. You're living in the past, my friend. You're an old u trade unionist who doesn't even know what the hell you're talking about anymore conflict of interest in discussing all of this, too. You don't know what you're talking about. 
You have no idea what you're talking about. If you're unwilling or unable to understand the threat we're facing from the uh, Muslim invasion and the Muslim crusade that is going on around the world, how can we even have a discussion? No, I understand what the threat is. I so what do we argue? Well, then why are you and I two good Americans fighting? Why are we fighting with each other? That is, okay. I understand what the threat is, but I'm So then why, then why are you and I, where are we disagreeing? I don't even understand what the disagreement is. My disagreement is with your, uh, uh, you know, you're touting uh, Churchill at every time I listen to you, and I do listen to you because it's entertainment, not fact, but entertainment. That's and right. I In other words, you liberals are the only ones who have brains. We have no brains, the conservatives. We entertain you. The reason you're listening to me is that inside you, there's a man who can still live and stand up and understand reality. The man who wants to overcome and break free of the shackles of liberalism. That's why you're listening to me. I'm not entertaining you. I'm educating you, Peter. No, not me. If you look, if you look at the people that have taken us through wars from the First World War through the Second World War, through Korea, through Vietnam, we're all Democrat presidents. So what are you saying, that the Democrats are the party of war? Fanatical, radical... Wait, sir, wait a minute. Are you saying that the Democrats are the party of militancy and war? No, I'm saying that the Democrats... Oh, wait, you just said that. I agree with you. It has been Democrats who have taken us to war. Absolutely, I agree with you. So what's your point? point that, they're a part, that they're a militant party of war? Well, then I would, I would gladly become a Democrat if they were still a party willing to stand up for America, but they're not. They become a sort of European Socialist Party of Appeasers. They're not that party that you're talking about. I would gladly join a party that was still a JFK, FDR type party. They disappeared a long time ago, Peter. I think you're living in another world. No, no, they didn't disappear. They're there. They are there. In what about my statement that in 1933, did you hear that piece or you missed that? Which one? The, the year that the Nazis came to power. The Oxford Union, which is the debating society where all of the future British political elite would debate, they passed a resolution that said this house would under no circumstances fight for its king and country. Uh, that you and I would agree. I think that that's uh, uh, appeasement, wouldn't you? You've got to remember the Germans. you got to remember your history. The Germans. And well, the sir, wait, don't, don't speak down to me. Don't talk down to me because I'll throw you off my show. This is my bar, not yours. You've got to remember your history. And you've got to remember that I'm far more educated than you are. Well, yeah, that's, that's, why, you didn't, that's why they didn't accept you into Berkeley. You remember how much you were... Wait, wait, sir, excuse me, sir. Hello? I earned my Ph.D. from the University of California at Berkeley. What are you talking about? Just what are you talking about? Talking about I, never I never applied for anything but uh, admission to the Ph.D. program, and I, and I got my Ph.D. in three years, sir, with a 3.94... A GPA, uh, whatever they call it, uh, out of a 4.0. Can you match those credentials, sir? What about the time you applied for? Well, no, 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 no. You see, again, you're a classic weasel. Every time you lose a point, you change the argument. You can't win one point with me, so you keep going to the next point. But I got news for you. You're fighting a futile battle. You're absolutely 1933, right. the Nazis come to power. The Oxford Union, a liberal debating society, says... We, this House, would under no circumstances fight for its king and country. That is appeasement. You know that, and I know that. How did Hitler take it? He said, well, the British would never fight another war with Germany. He became emboldened. It's identical to what your leader, Nancy Pelosi, is doing with the Islamo-fascists. Every time your party of appeasers, called the Democrats, pass another resolution against the war, pass another resolution appeasing the Muslims, pass another resolution saying women in burkas can work at security counters in America because we'd be racist otherwise. Every time your party of appeasers does that, they dig the grave of America another foot deeper. And I'm ashamed at you, sir, because you probably were one day at one time in your life an educated, intelligent man. So I'm going to send you how to reduce the risk of Alzheimer's because I'm afraid that you're in the early stages of that dread disease.